Hello Ratbags, it's Joe Plays Games with a Atlas video. The day is the start of my update videos. I'm going to be giving you the full information you need for every big major patch for Atlas. It's no secret I'm enjoying the game despite some of the negativity and some of my misgivings. It has proven that they can make a compelling game once they get through all the problems and the issues. Now this isn't the end of it but today's update adds a huge amount of features brand new stuff on the horizon coming in to improve Atlas even more and pretty much make it the pirate game that many people really want rather than a just basic survival game set at sea. So let's head right into the patch notes. We're going to go over all the stuff that we know. Huge changes. There's going to be 50 brand new levels added to characters. Weight reduction or weight boost, I should say, by 50% for most ships as well as a bunch of other key important things. So the update is split in two. We're going to be getting one, or you should have had one overnight in the last few hours even. And it does look like it's been a major update, so you may need a small update on the actual game side, not just on the server side. But there is an even bigger one coming on Monday noon. Now this is where it gets a little bit more convoluted. The update on Monday is going to implement a bunch of features, but some of them features won't actually go live until Wednesday the 9th of January. And big thing from that is that the new neutral zone is going to be added to claim flags, so you'll be able to set and choose exactly who can build in your area and tax them. So let's start from the beginning though before we get to that one. Default resource and taming speeds have increased to two times as the baseline. That's great news, so people who have been spending hours and hours taming, just like they used to do in Ark back in the day, are going to be able to find that a lot quicker. Reduced minimum damage and minimum percentage on the flame arrow buff by 33%. It was pretty much a exploit, people using flame arrows. I just unlocked it in my live stream before i done this video last night. Great timing, they went and nerfed it. Loads of people were using this. Firing them on alphas, firing them on any really creature, gave you a bunch more XP. Reduced max damage done on flame arrow projectiles hit to 50. So again, they really have nerfed the flame arrows. Increased gravity on flame arrows 20% to make it less ranged. Added durability consumption to flame and stone arrows. One dura per shot, 40 shots per bow repair. And they've reduced the bow durability to 40 to put in line with that as well. So you'd only be able to fire your bow 40 times before you need to repair it. Fix the bug that had mortars at rapid firing, fix an issue where the upkeep timer on PVE claim flags was not correctly updating. Loads of data loss with companies and groups and alliances has now been restored or resolved. Official network companies are now limited to 500 members and there's a current measure until the system for the companies receives a back end overhaul in the long term. Now this may piss off a few people but I think it's probably the right move. The game is still very early and despite the fact that the game promises you can have thousands of players and the idea is that you could even start your own little civilization, I think keeping it a little bit smaller at the beginning just to make sure they've got everything resolved with the politics and the way they govern stuff is the right move. So 500 members is pretty, pretty good. And I think that's still large enough. It also means that things are going to be a bit more even if you have got these big, huge, mega companies there is going to be a limit to how and what they work or they're going to have to alliance up and that split things and that makes it more interesting as well. Fixed inland water boys being invisible and fixed boys so they no longer prevent resource respawn. Prevent ship collision damage from occurring when caused by other player ships on PvE servers. I know that's a big one. People have been complaining that they've basically been trolled or it's like PvP on the PvE servers. Fixed sunken ship area indicator lingering even after a shipwreck has gone. Deep water aggressive creatures frequency and targeting range has been reduced. Melee weapons are now temporarily effective against ship blanks. So a big one, people are running around and basically destroying ships in harbours with just some basic tools. So it does look like that's going to be nerfed. Sailing against the wind now provides 30% off with the wind sail force as opposed to zero. This is huge news. It means you won't be stuck literally moving nowhere. If I've got that right, that does mean you will have a tiny bit of speed moving around the map. I love the fact that Atlas is pretty realistic in terms of the weather and you've really got to pay attention. Back in the day, you'd have smaller ships, actually rowboats being able to tug big ships if that was the case. And since we don't have that in Atlas at the moment, this is the next best thing, adding a tiny bit of a boost to your motion. 
Also increase the amount of sail force provided by minimum wind speed conditions by 30% and the sail force provided by maximum wind speed conditions by 15%. Every tame can now get a minimum of 30 tame levels into it. So if you've got your wolf, it's level 5, you'll be able to tame it by up to 35 levels. So you'll be able to put in 35 different points into it. Whereas a level 40 wolf will get 70 tame levels to use. No matter what level creature it's going to be, you get to level it up by what level it was, plus an additional 30. And this is the big one. Increase the base carry weight of all ships by 40%. That means you're going to be able to do so much more. Currently, right now, I do believe a couple of the sort of metal runs on sloops and stuff, you've only been able to carry around 2,500 metal, depending on how you've built your ship. So this is going to be huge. So that is massive stuff already, and this is what early access really means. We're going to be seeing big changes like this. They're not always going to be very positive. They may end up being more nerfs like the arrows, but there are so many good things in this initial real big patch. So what's happening on Monday then? So the claim flags are going to allow a neutral zone setting, which allows any other tribes to build with them with the specified tax weight applied to them. You are able to specify an inclusion or exclusion list to these to only allow or exclude the specific company IDs, player IDs. So if you've got two friends, real good friends in an alliance, maybe you've got two that you're just keeping at bay a little bit, it means you'll be able to set your claim flag so your two good friends can build, but not the other two. It basically customises and adds a lot more to it. Now all claim flags are going to have this enabled as a default setting when placed and this will also be a retroactive change. However, it will not function until Wednesday the 9th of January at noon where we will release another server update to make neutral zones active. This means you'll have two days from Monday to Wednesday to decide and adjust the settings on your claim flag before the change is live. So make sure you go to all your claim flags when this update drops on Monday. You don't want to be caught out on Wednesday, maybe you didn't set something correct, maybe you didn't check and everyone can go and build on your area. Server performance improvements, massively needed, I mean that's going to be needed all the time. At the moment the lag is absolutely atrocious. So many times in my Discord, in the Ravenger Discord chat that we've got going on on the rat bags, it's literally a case of people having to jump off for a good chunk of time until the lag quietens down. All cannons turrets can now be pin coded protected for leave activation deactivation. There are four times as many trade ships on the seas and they now also sell commodity types with gold as do NPCs at free ports. Lawless servers can no longer be specified as home servers. If your home server was a lawless server you'll be required to pick a new free port home server upon respawn. Now this was a huge problem of course, they had massive issues at launch, people couldn't get into the servers, they were bottlenecking at the free ports. So they opened up areas around the free ports and you basically spawned in water. This wasn't ideal, you were miles away from a free port, you had to start even harder, you had to craft your own raft which was twice as many resources as buying one. So this looks like that has now been nerfed, they feel like they've got a sufficient player base, a sufficient way of dealing with the bottlenecking. So hopefully it means that free ports will be exactly what they're meant to be, a good starting area for everyone that spawns in them. You can now buy a ramshackle sloop from the NPC ship Mildsman at free ports. The ramshackle sloop is a pre-built sloop which has permanently lower plank HP, carry weight and crew limit. But it's cheaper and faster to acquire if you want to get into sailing faster. This is huge news, this is exactly the kind of criticism that people were levelling at Atlas. Rather than being a game about pirates and sailing, it was more just arc. People don't mind a little bit of grinding, but the idea is to be a pirate, and this is great stuff. It means that people can really get out to sea quicker. Favourite server selection drop down is added for unofficial. Yes, it's literally taken me ages, absolute ages, to get anywhere at the moment. As you saw from the menu screen at the beginning of this video, it takes around 5, 6, maybe even 10 minutes sometimes to find an unofficial server. I've been trying to join mine occasionally and it just takes so long. Don't forget I have got an unofficial server coming. If you want to come and join me, we're making a huge grid map with nine servers initially and we'll be adding more from other content creators in the future. Me and GG Fizz are partnering up with a bunch of other great YouTubers and we're basically setting up a huge world with factions, different lawless zones as well as PvE areas. So if you're interested in joining, come and join my Discord and ask some questions in there. But already we've got over 100 people waiting to come and join part of our communities. Fixed up some temperature scalings and weather events are now indicated on the HUD. Armour effectiveness will be adjusted so that firearms are more useful in PvP. 
Remove C claims, they weren't very useful at present. Enemy claim flags can now be directly pinged to identify any contestant enemies nearby, and the time required to steal an enemy claim can now decrease the more claims the enemy team has. Big changes to farming, they've made it easier. So water's going to be more available, it's going to go uphill, you're going to get more crop growth and yield, and it's going to be faster and a lot more. Reduce shovel stamina cost. You can now fill water skins, jars from ground spouts. That's great stuff. It means we won't be starving and dying from water every two seconds. Metal tools can no longer damage the planks for anchored ships. So they already mentioned they nerfed it, basically stopped anyone being able to do any sort of damage. This was a temporary measure to put it against any ships that are inactive, basically, to stop people trolling others. And that will be the final adjustment on the Wednesday, the 9th of January, that metal tools can no longer damage the planks of anchored ships only. 50 more level players, 50 more player levels have been added and skill points per level increased. So we could see a big change. At the moment, you only get, I think, like one point up to level 8. Then you get, I do believe, two points at level 9. Then from level 10 onwards, you get three points per skill, or per level, I should say. So we'll have to see how that plays out. I will go through it. I have been meaning to do a tutorial on skills, but this is the kind of thing I was waiting for. So I'll be able to do a proper tutorial with all the changes, the latest ones involved, showing you guys where you can go with your skill trees and what ones are going to be the best for you as a player, rather than maybe just best for everyone. But yeah, 50 more player levels, that brings up to what, 101? Loot stat scaling has been boosted retroactively by 60%, so all that loot you've been getting, if you've had something you thought was a bit useless, go and take a look at it again and see if it's been increased. Sea monster damage has been reduced by 66%, some ship's costs have been adjusted and in some cases reduced by approximately about 50%. That's great stuff, it means again, less grind to get the big stuff we want so we can go out there and be pirates. Animal health regen rebalance so they're not regenerating high amounts while in combat. That's good news as well. If you're trying to catch a horse, especially with the lag and stuff, the amount of missed shots I've had with a bow and arrow is really, really hard. And all the time, the animals regain their health. So this is good stuff. Eating poop is now instant death. <laughs> what? Come on, man. You would not die if you ate your own shit, I'm pretty sure. Fixed an issue where you couldn't kill yourself by exhaustion for stuck situations. So that is all coming Monday, but some of these features won't be live to the actual Wednesday. I do believe it is only the claims and the weapon stuff that's only going to be working on the Wednesday. Okay, so what about the future? Where are they going with Atlas for the next updates? Well, they've updated some undesired movement speed max taming additions within status components, some already set in creature blueprint, plus some unintentional, unrealistic water movement speeds. Adjusted seagull and crow aggro speeds would previously take a long time to de-aggro. They've updated the collision to allow player attacks to land more consistently. They've improved tigers so they can walk up slopes better. Razor two stamina adjustments would previously fatigue from running in like two seconds. Animation updates for rabbit and set up for shoulder mounting. <gasps> bunny rabbits on your shoulder. Oh man, bunny rabbits poo like so much. Then pebbles are going to be just running down your back. Updated Vulture AI to only target sleeping humans if the player is connected. Included foot sockets in giraffe's neck attack to more consistently harvest. Reduced bee movement to allow player attacks to land. Reduced sting buff duration to better reflect bee size. Increased harvest amount of fur and milk from sheep and cow to insensitive taming and better compete with natural resource gathering amounts. Updated max yield things. Timings to scale with creature level, similar to other creature abilities instead of food value, and clamp down the amount of fur gain from harvesting wild sheep, again to insensitize taming. Wild sheep will also flee and may attack players after excessive shearing. That is crazy, your sheep may turn against you if you keep cutting their hair. All in all, it's big stuff. Atlas has had a bunch of updates, of course, but lots of these have been about fire fixing. Now we really are going to start seeing about some of the additions added to it. And this is pretty fast stuff considering the game only came out, what, three weeks ago, four weeks ago near? In fact, if I say three, four weeks ago, it feels like that, but it's only been literally like two weeks. So, Atlas has got a long way to go. For all the haters, I totally get it, I totally understand. But I am really enjoying this game and I am going to carry on covering it, as well as keeping you up to date on Ark Survival Evolved and all the early access games that I normally cover. So stay tuned for more Atlas tutorials and videos. I'm going to be covering them in a big way in the next few weeks. Make sure you go and join my Discord if you want to find out a little bit more information about how you can join my unofficial servers. 
and we are still recruiting for the official server i am playing on pvp eu at the moment if you want to take part if you want to come and help us we are gearing up we've got a good company of about 20 at the moment we've had various different amounts of brigades and we're just on our way to completing our galleon so again join discord and come and talk to us and join the ratbaggers ravenger crew until the big next atlas update i will see you ratbags in the open seas